Hi, I'm Dr. Rayshawn Ray. I'm an associate professor at the University of Maryland. And I want to share some more sociological perspectives on Philando Castile, Alton Sterling, um, and the Dallas ambush of police officers following the response to being a guest on Al Jazeera's Inside Story. In our society, being black is to be a suspect. Being black is to be questioned. Being black is the perception to some people that if we don't catch him committing a crime today, we will eventually. This is the case with Philando Castile, who was murdered by a police officer in St. Paul, Minnesota. Philando Castile was stopped over 50 times, 50 times. To some people, this means he was a lifetime convict. To others, it means he was repeatedly profiled and traumatized for his blackness. If he was a convicted felon of a violent crime, do you think he would be allowed to be a legal gun owner? Well, the answer to this question is no. Personally, I can relate to Philando Castile's experiences with law enforcement. I've been suspected of robbery, rape, and burglary. I've been stopped over 20 times by the police. I've been thrown up against a car, dragged up out of a car, thrown up against walls, handcuffed, taken to jail, had to pay several traffic citations accumulating to thousands of dollars over my lifetime. Now, what's interesting is that I actually don't have a criminal record. So you have to ask yourself, how does that happen in society? How do things like that occur when people don't have criminal records? And instead, you end up getting brutalized throughout your lifetime by people who are sworn to protect and serve you. Being in the suburbs or in rural areas where cops and white people should know your name oftentimes leads to things being worse. I've been in these neighborhoods where I've been one of the only blacks in a neighborhood. And unfortunately, this hasn't helped my relations with police officers. But everywhere I've lived, I've been pulled over from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, to Atlanta, Georgia, to Memphis, Tennessee, to Nashville, Tennessee, to Bloomington, Indiana, Martinsville, Indiana, Indianapolis, Indiana, Berkeley, California, Oakland, California, College Park, Maryland, Roanoke, Virginia. In fact, what's ironic is that the only place that I have not been pulled over or stopped by police is in Munheim, Germany. And we know how bad Germany is for Turkish people. And we also know how bad Germany was and still is traumatizing for Jewish people uh, via the Holocaust. The point is that this is how bad the United States is for black people. Even those like me who have a PhD live in a nice neighborhood, has a good job, and doesn't have a criminal record. My daily life is more similar for t to Philando Castile than it is to the other professors that I work with. These incidents aren't necessarily about criminals being killed. These incidents are about blackness being criminalized, blackness never being given a fair and impartial trial, blackness never being viewed as innocent until proven guilty. Blackness being put on trial for murder for non-capital -cap punishment accusations. And let me talk about something else. You can be pro-black and pro-police. Pro-black means taking pride in my blackness as a response to societal subjugation, institutional racism, marginalization, and relative deprivation. Society from the time black kids are born are told and shown that they are less worthy, less savable, intellectually inferior, culturally inept, and criminal prone. Blackness is viewed as a societal mistake. So pro-black is a counter to those things. Pro-black doesn't mean anti-white. Most black people do not hate white people. What we hate is oppression. I had two uncles and my wife's grandfather who were all cops. My great uncle was the first black on the Murfreesboro police force and later became the first black chief of police. My wife's grandfather was the first black chief of detectives. I've had family members serve in the, in the armed forces from my mom, my grandfather, who was a drill sergeant, served uh, in two wars, and my god brother, god brother who uh, was in Air Force Special Ops and served three tours in Iraq. My family serves America and loves America, despite this love not being reciprocated. In fact, blacks are actually more likely than whites to serve in the military. So the accusation that blacks are anti-American or anti-white simply isn't true. We are not a homogenous group, however, and we do have an array, an array of perspectives. The person who killed police officers in Dallas was clearly troubled. 
Unlike Dylan Roof, who killed nine black church members after they welcomed him into the church in Charleston, South Carolina and prayed with him and Mother Emanuel, actually made him think about not killing them for a second. Unlike Dylan Roof, Micah Johnson isn't given the benefit of the doubt that he may have mental health problems or suffer from PTSD after serving in the military. Why? Because our narrative about blackness already assumes deficits of the mind. It is already assumed that something is wrong with blackness, so it is not worth salvaging. As a black man in America, I want to stop tensing up when I see police officers because my blackness might set them off. We want the same positive community relations with cops that whites experience, and we are not getting this. So when Philando Castile or Alton, Alton Sterling or the hundred of other names that I could mention are killed, black people mourn like they lost a close relative because they realize that the trauma that police brutality terrorizes on black lives is actually something that they've experienced. See, blacks have a collective memory of police mistreatment and realize that while Philando Castile was murdered by police, he was stopped over 50 times in the past 14 years, 50 times. And he doesn't have a conviction for a violent or major crime. This is the daily mental and emotional trauma that blackness manifests. Even when we don't die by police brutality, this mental and emotional trauma manifests itself in physical ways through stress, high blood pressure, other poor health outcomes. It leads to us dying an early, slow death in our 30s, 40s, and 50s, well before we should. I bet if the blood pressure of blacks was checked when a black person is killed by police, it would significantly increase. When these incidents happen, black people are unable to sleep, unable to eat, unable to go to work, and when they do go to work, they cry at their desk. We have migraine headaches, body aches, pains, Having con We start having conversations about increasing our life insurance policies just in case a traffic stop goes super racist and biased. Why? Because we are mourning. We are mourning a person whose life should have mattered, which means our lives don't matter. We are mourning an America promised to us that never transpired. We are mourning broken promises every time we look at our kids and smile as if stuff is normal. We mourn America just like white people do. Our DNA is in this land. We are America and America is us, but America doesn't love us. America tolerates us unconditionally or actually conditionally until we act too free or too expressive or too demonstrative or too loud or too defiant or too successful or too real. And then America disposes of us. Finally, I'm not here to make you feel comfortable with or guilty about black oppression. I'm here to speak truth to power. If you want to help change that oppression and create equity for all human beings, then remember that your silence is your acceptance. We can change this one conversation, one policy, one pause of a gun trigger at a time. In the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., we are here to cash the check of broken promises since the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. And we want that check cash now. We are here for justice, dignity, respect and equality.